okay? It didn't say after the third element. It said after the position. Okay, okay. So These teenagers spend hours glued to their computer screens, but they're not playing games or doing their homework for that matter. They're studying something they're not taught at school, computer coding. Would be three. They're picking right. up Python and HTML5 and Ruby on Rails. John L. White is a sophomore at Vallejo High. It's a new language. It's like you learn, like you're learning Spanish, but you're learning something else other than Spanish. Letters and numbers and symbols. Repeat one more time for me. What this is the Hidden Genius Project, a small nonprofit that's working to recruit young black men into the high tech sector. It's one of the few parts of the economy that's booming and aching for diversity. Other people can help you make The boys the have to apply to the Sometimes program, often, and if accepted, they commit to classes twice a week in Oakland. Oh, Rihanna, hold the door, please, Rihanna. Brian McCuller is a sophomore at Salesian High School in Richmond. He'd hoped for a football career, then a knee injury put him on the sidelines. I didn't think I'd be doing anything in life, and this comes along, Hidden Genius Project, and it just, it just opened, I just saw it open doors for me. Brian lives with his grandparents, who really like what he's doing, but don't quite get it. Dolores Murray is his grandmother. I don't have any idea what coding is. <laughs> Murray does understand that it's a promising step. Instead of just playing video games, her grandson could end up making them for money. It has been a real good thing for a teenage young man who is trying to do the right thing. He's trying to stay out of the streets, trying to get good grades. He has all this going for him. The input list. And then Hidden Genius comes along and just kind of adds a little more gel to the pudding so that it, you know, it kind of sets. Here, use my iPad. Uh, okay. A few weekends ago, the Hidden Genius students spent three days working nonstop to build games and mobile apps. It was their very first hackathon, one for black male achievement. All right, guys, let's go. And behind it is Kalima Pryforce. Pryforce, now a tech entrepreneur, started in a very different place. He grew up in foster care. And while he found a way out, his little brother did not. The system reduced a lot of his opportunities to pursue his own dreams. He actually wanted to be a computer scientist. So he stayed in the group home system until he was 18, and then he aged out and he was killed a couple of months later. So that was when I decided that I would focus on becoming an educator. This was like the skeleton. Hackathons are about generating ideas and prototypes fast. The best ideas make it to market, but that's later. Today, the focus is on mobile apps that help teens deal with everyday problems, like what to eat and whether to show up to school. Brian and his group are working on a do-it-yourself adventure game about decision-making. Make that a little bit smaller. John L's team is creating a fitness app with a cartoon bird that gets slimmer the more the user exercises. How many should we do? One, I mean, I mean, one jumping jack? Five or ten. Each team has tech professionals coaching the students. So it was like, we need coders, we need designers, we need a lot of people. Oakland is a stone's throw away from Silicon Valley. And companies like the music streaming site Pandora have set up shop here. But Pryfor says while the community is largely African American, the startup workforce is not. Some of these kids, they could be considered misfits, they could be considered uh, disadvantaged and all these different weird terms. But I like to prefer to see them as low opportunity youth. And we are trailblazers. At the end of the weekend, each group pitches their ideas to each other. 12.5 million potential customers. And a panel of judges. How did you uh, reach out to uh, folks to get more input on the game? Hackathon funder Mitch Caper has invested over a million dollars in the Oakland startup scene this last year alone. He says the East Bay is full of untapped potential and maybe even the next billion dollar company. I've always been looking around corners. So when I got started in personal computers in 1978, nobody took them seriously. And when I started working on and investing in internet companies in 1993, nobody took it seriously, and so on. So this really isn't any different. Black and Latino kids spend plenty of time using technology. But the Hidden Genius Project wants to see consumers become producers 
and see that diversity reflected in high-tech products. Take violence on the streets. If we want to build an app that could have saved Trayvon Martin's life, one of the best approaches is to make sure that Trayvon Martin is able to build that app for the Trayvon Martin. What potential? As exciting as it is, a hackathon is short-lived. It'll take a lot of coding and programs like the Hidden Genius Project to really change the game. I live in South Vallejo, so it's ghetto every day. A lot of people stand outside, and I choose to code and come to Hidden Genius because I want to get away from it. With this app, I think we can, you know, modify our choices, make better decisions, and maybe in the future, I think we can change the world with this game. Thank you.